Hey, Walter Sorrells back with more tips for the knife maker. Today, squaring dies for your forge press. So, we'll be making dueling dies today. If you've been watching my videos, you know I like doing different approaches to solving the same problem. To that end, in this video, we'll make two versions of a squaring die. Now, squaring dies are used on a forge press to squash things into a square shape. This is commonly done when making jelly roll Damascus, W patterns, canned steel, and various other things. Now, incidentally, this video is a follow-on to a video I made recently about making ladder Damascus dies. I'll be skipping over a couple things that I showed in more detail on that video. If you haven't seen that one, you might want to check it out here first. It's helpful to have multiple sizes of squaring dies to handle different sizes of billets. So we'll make two, one with one inch square dies and the other which makes roughly one and a half inch squares. Now if you're serious about this stuff, you might want to have a set that runs from say one inch to around oh two inches depending on the size of your press and what kind of projects you plan to do. All right, let's jump into it. Now the first die I'll show you is the simpler of the two. These will be one inch squaring dies, meaning that the die will be made to form square billets measuring one inch on each side. My forge press uses die plates that are 3 eighths of an inch thick by 4 inches wide by 8 inches long. So I'll use a cutting wheel and my angle grinder to cut the plates from a longer piece of stock. Next, I'll cut 4 pieces of 1 inch angle iron. This is just standard stuff that you can buy at Home Depot. I'll also use some 1 by 1 8 inch stock for a retention plate on the die. So, the basic idea for this die is to use two pieces of angle iron on the top plate and two on the bottom so that when the two dies are brought together, they form a square. Dead simple. I'll begin by measuring to make sure everything's centered and square on my plate. And I'll tack weld one piece of angle iron, complete the welds, and then repeat with the second angle iron. If you were a real welder, you'd have a nice rigid setup where you could put things so they won't warp under all this heat. But I'm not, and I don't. So part of the equation here is that the die plates bow a little with all that heat and have to be squashed back flat with my press so that they'll seat correctly. Once that's done, I'll install the first completed die in the top position on the forge. Next, I'll set the other two pieces of angle iron on the bottom plate, bring the top die down so they're almost touching and adjust them so they mate perfectly. The closer they mate, the more trouble free the operation of the die. Then I'll use welding clamps to clamp the two pieces of angle iron down, take them back to my welding station, that's a pretentious way of describing the floor of my shop, and I'll weld them up. Here's a little footage of the dies at work. Now one inch dies are pretty darn small, so this is only useful for fairly small projects like this one. Alright, next I'll make another somewhat larger and beefier set of dies. This is going to be a little more typical of the size that you would find useful for most squaring operations. I'll use a 1 by 2 inch mild steel bar to form my dies. I'll cut it on a 45 degree bias on my chop saw, then cut another piece with a square edge. This will allow me to flip the two pieces that I've cut around so that when they're on the die plate, they form half of a square. Then I'll repeat the process for the matching die. So I'm using my abrasive saw to cut four different cuts, two of which are 90 degree cuts and two of which are 45 degree cuts. In retrospect, 
I would have made the parallel support edges a little wider to provide a more stable base. But I sort of cheaped out trying to conserve stock. I've used them a few times and they work fine, but still, I'd be happier if I cut them about half an inch wider on each side. Now we'll bring the pieces to the die plates, making sure we've measured everything so they're centered and square, and then weld the first set together. Now the retention flange. I'll run a bead down the center of the two and also around the perimeter of each one of the two pieces that are going together to make the die. All right, welding, welding, welding. Then I'll repeat the same thing we did with the previous die set, putting the completed die into the top of the press and then adjusting the parts for the bottom die to get the fit exactly right, then welding that one up. And that's all she wrote. Here's some more quick videos showing the dies in operation. You'll be able to see how this die is used in an upcoming part of my series of videos about making Damascus steel. Hopefully I should have that one out within a few months. Takeaway here, as usual, more than one way to skin a cat. The solid dies will probably be a little more durable, but they'll both work just fine. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel and check out my website, waltersorrelsblades.com, where you can find more of my work. You'll also find plenty more videos there that you can't find on YouTube with very, very detailed information about all aspects of Japanese blade making. Also, like me on Facebook at Walter Sorrels Blades.